Hey everyone, I'm Dave. I'm Anna Mae. Okay, so on this episode of Geek World Radio, we decided to take a look at some of the upcoming Marvel movies and talk a little bit about the people that are directing them because a lot of these names might be really unfamiliar to you. So true, Anna Mae. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing is, what's great about Marvel is they take these risky chances, you yeah. know? I mean, think about Jon Favreau. Before he directed Iron Man, the biggest movie under his belt was like Elf, that or, Will Ferrell movie. Or, or Zathora, that, that like Jumanji-like movie. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so the thing is, they like to make these crazy choices, mm -hmm. these unconventional choices. I mean, come on, even Joss Whedon had only done one movie right. before uh, before the Avengers, Serenity. Yeah, those of us in the, in the nerdosphere, we like to go, yeah, of course you picked Joss Whedon. But most people that were just reviewers were like, why would they choose this guy? Who's this Joss Whedon guy? So with the upcoming slate of Marvel movies in the next two years, mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about some of these directors and give you an idea of who they are in case you haven't heard of them. Right. So first off, we have Thor The Dark World. Mm -hmm. This is coming out in November. This year. Exactly. And this is directed by Alan Taylor. Mm -hmm. Now, most of you might not know who Alan Taylor is. I'm guessing pretty much all of you don't know who Alan Taylor is. Now, he's mostly a TV director. Mm -hmm. He's directed a bunch of episodes of Game of Thrones. Yeah. He directed the pilot to Mad Men. Yeah. He directed some stuff for Oz. I mean, he's a pretty, like, uh, big-time guy in the TV world. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't really done much in, in feature films. But, you know... Like we said, Joss Whedon had only made one feature film before he made The Avengers. He had pr primarily done TV. Yeah, now I think the thing to remember is what's great about TV directors is nowadays TV is right up against film when it comes to quality. Mm -hmm. They're almost identical. In some ways, some TV is even better than most films. <laughs> and Game of Thrones definitely goes, I think, in that category. Yeah. So the fact that Alan Taylor, you know, he does this stuff, Game of Thrones is really very close to Thor. I mean, that's kind of the process he talked about. Mm -hmm. He went in there because Kevin Feige was a huge fan of Game of Thrones. Right. And basically he went in there and they were like, we kind of want to do something like Game of Thrones. And so Alan Taylor was the perfect guy. And you know what? Since this is not the same fish out of water story, this is going to be about a big war in Asgard. I think that he might be the right guy. Yeah. So even though he's mostly a TV guy, I think that working on Game of Thrones gives him the perfect background for doing the Thor movie. Totally anime. Okay, up next is Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Now, a lot of people are excited about this second Captain America movie. And the directors, Joe and Anthony Russo, are the guys who are directing this. So these guys were a really interesting choice. They are generally known for directing comedy. Uh, they've also only really directed two movies. One is Welcome to Collinwood. The other is You, Me, and Dupree. But again, primarily, these guys have done TV. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're really known for directing uh, community. Yeah, they do a lot of community episodes, especially that big paintball episode everyone loves. Mm -hmm. They've also directed a lot of different pilots, which, you know, when it really comes down to it, pilots are kind of like movies nowadays. They totally are. It, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, a pilot basically establishes all the characters. It's a big event. It mm -hmm. always has a way bigger budget than the rest of the series. It is very much a film uh, version. Uh, so, yeah, basically, you know, Arrested Development, they did the pilot. Yep. So the funny part is a big reason why these guys initially went went in to interview for Marvel is the people at Marvel are really big fans of community. Uh, but basically from there on end, the thing about Marvel is they try to choose people that are very good with story and mm -hmm. character. They're not worried as much about getting like the next Michael Bay right. because they have a whole group of people that are, you know, can really help these directors with things like special effects. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kenneth Branagh, Shane Black, these guys all talk about the fact they really didn't do a lot of special effects driven stuff right. before they worked for Marvel, but that was okay. They got helped out with that. Yeah. So I think, you know, the Russo brothers, you know, they could be really great. I mean, the fact is at the end of the day, what's really great about about these TV directors is they can make stuff on time, they mm -hmm. can make stuff in budget, and they're really yeah. good with working with ensembles, which is really important. So you know what? I think if Marvel is excited to work with them, then hey, maybe we should all be excited too. And really when you look at the list of people that they were originally looking for to direct Captain America, the Winter Soldier, I mean, it was it was a very strange list of mostly people that, that I'd never heard of. Exactly. So, you know, like you said, they like to take risks and they like to get people that, that they think will do the right kind of job for each movie. So Captain America Winter Soldier comes out April 4th of 2014. I can't wait, anime. I'm really excited. All right, next up is Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, this was really exciting because James Gunn is really an 
awesome director in his own right. Mm -hmm. Now, he has done really only a few movies, but he's also written a ton, too. That's true. So the movies he's done that people really know him from is Slither, which is this great throwback horror movie starring mm -hmm. Nathan Fillion. All you people who love Nathan Fillion, you should check it out if you haven't seen it. Also, Michael Rooker, who's in pretty much every one of his movies. Yeah. James Gunn's movies. Uh, James Gunn also directed Super, which is just a great deconstruction of a superhero mm -hmm. film. Starring Rain Wilson. Exactly. Vigilante film is totally awesome. Ellen Page is excellent, yeah, by the way. Yeah, she is. Uh, but but, you know, before that, he did a lot of writing. He wrote the Scooby-Doo movies. Uh, he also wrote the Dawn of the Dead remake. Yeah. So the guy is a really awesome director and writer. The guy went on. He actually is writing Guardians of the Galaxy as long as directing it. Yeah. It's kind of a weird story, but what's really funny is I remember reading from Joss Whedon that Marvel said, hey, we're thinking of doing a Guardians of the Galaxy movie to Joss Whedon. And he goes, well, that could be kind of weird. And they're like, well, we're thinking of James Gunn to direct it. And he goes, oh, then it'll be fine. Yeah, well, James Gunn is just an interesting guy. He got his start at the studio Troma. Now, for those of you who don't know Troma, well, they do things like the Toxic Avenger. Yes. That, that kind of explains it all. Well, right? his first job at Troma was writing Tromeo and Juliet, mm -hmm. which he actually basically directed, though was uncredited yeah. for doing so. So I think James Gunn is going to be great. We've seen a little footage from Guardians of the Galaxy. It looks awesome. Mm -hmm. It's going to be totally badass. And Guardians of the Galaxy is going to be really important for Marvel because if, it, if they can pull it off, basically it's going to be a movie based on a bunch of characters that you didn't grow up with a bunch of toys of or like on cereal boxes. These characters that are relatively unknown to most people. And once again, it shows that Marvel really tries to choose the right guy for the right film. And Guardians of the Galaxy needed someone that was experienced in stuff that's a little bit weirder than your standard Marvel superheroes. Yeah, and James Gunn is definitely the guy. Mm -hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy is coming out August 1st of 2014. So last but not least, of the slated Marvel movies that they already know who the director is going to be is mm -hmm. Ant-Man. Yes. Now this is going to be directed by Edgar Wright, who really, in a way, is the most prolific of any of these directors, yeah. at least film-wise. What do you direct, anime? Well, he directed Shaun of the Dead. He directed Hot Fuzz. He directed The World's End. Scott Pilgrim versus The World. Good call. I mean, the guy is amazing. You know, he's been making movies for quite a while mm -hmm. now. He's just so great. He's got his own distinctive style I really love. And you know what? I think we're all still kind of crossing our fingers that Simon Pegg will be Ant-Man. The other thing is that Edgar Wright is the guy that's been pushing for Ant-Man to be made. He's like, it's not like Marvel was like, yeah, let's do Ant-Man. And Edgar Wright was like, Ooh, maybe I can get this job. No, Edgar Wright's been out there being like, do Ant-Man. Let me do Ant-Man. I'll do Ant-Man for you. Ant-Man's awesome. Exactly. And, you know, like James Gunn, you know, they need an artist who's, like, really amazing, who's really different, who can kind of make these less-known characters more interesting. Yeah. I think it's, you know, a little different with the TV directors because, basically, these are characters that we're already familiar with. Right. You know? The thing about Ant-Man, though, is that for those of you who are familiar with the Avengers comics, you know that Ant-Man is one of the creators of the Avengers. He's yes. one of the guys that formed the group. And so he is such an important character, and Edgar Wright is the right guy to kind of give it that kind of seriousness. Yes. Um, while also understanding the complete humor of the character and the fact that, that Ant-Man himself is kind of a douchebag. Total douchebag. And really, like, his greatest power is he can become little takes a while for him to get big, though. Yeah. Then it's awesome. Yeah, then he's Giant Man. And for those of you comic fans out there, Ant-Man actually created Ultron, though they're not going to go that way with the films. Yeah. It's most likely going to be Tony Stark. Most likely. Okay, guys, so are you excited about these new directors, or were there some other directors you were hoping to direct these new Marvel movies? Let us know in the comments down below. Either way, thanks so much for watching. If you want to listen to our radio show, run every week on Indie 100 and The Point. And if you want to get in touch with us, you can send us an email to geekworldradio at yahoo.com, and be sure to check out our website, geekworldradio.com. I am Groot. Nice. Bye. Keep